I'm Dewan Johnson, and I'm excited to introduce you to my Think Bigger Actor podcast, where I'm going to share with you different kinds of talks and coachings and conversations with actors and industry professionals on thinking bigger. I hope these conversations will help you on your path to success, because I believe success is an inside job that starts with your mindset and the thoughts you hold dominant in your mind. Change your thoughts and you change your world. Your path to thinking bigger begins now. Sam Valentine. Ah! (laughs) I am so excited to have you on, you know, like you're like one of the original, you know, like podcasters in the industry, like that I remember not original, like, like everybody calm down. I'm not calling her old. Like (laughs) you can call me if it means I get clout for having a podcast and like, please. (laughs) Are you like OG, like on the podcast streets, on the podcast streets? So I had a podcast before One Broke Actress in 2016. That it's called was, yeah, it was. What's it called? Wait, 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 wait. What what was it called? called? Not According to Plan, which by the way, would have made a great actor name for a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it was like a chat podcast. My friend Scott and I, he ended up winning The Amazing Race. Uh, (laughs) We were like, let's do a podcast. We had no idea he was going to win. We just wanted to have a podcast and it was just the first thing. So. So you are OG. You are OG yeah. podcaster. I can say that. And I'm so excited to have you on. I, I remember, you know, back when, oh my God, the, I'm, I'm, very, I'm blanking on the name of the other podcast with Trevor and AJ. It was the the Actors Podcast. It was, oh, I can't remember it. But it was like one of those really ones that I, you know, back when I was thinking of mm-hmm. podcasting and I was just like, I got to follow what they're doing. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, way to I, way to way to pioneer, way to trailblaze. Okay, I appreciate that compliment. <laughs> I will say, I think it it was easier then because I was like, no one listens to podcasts. I can say whatever I want, and now everyone listens, and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to get into that. I got a couple questions for you because that's really how I started my podcast too. Mm-hmm. Was I was so scared and so delicate about it, and then somebody said, nobody's gonna listen in the beginning, Duan. So mm-hmm. go and have fun. And then now that people are writing in and they're talking about it, you're like, did I say the right thing? <laughs> yeah. And when you go back and listen, you're like, oh, I don't actually agree with that anymore. And that's a whole other bag of worms. Yeah. And having podcast episodes that are like six years old is not, it, you know, I want to warn people. I almost wish I could put a disclaimer on them. Like anything that happened before 2020, that information might not even be relevant anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, I'm going to talk about your acting first, you know, okay. if you don't mind. We're going to we're going to jump into the Valentine as as an actress. Yep. I don't know what voice that is, everybody. You know, it just came out and we're going to go with it. <laughs> you know, I, I want to know what's what's lightning round questions. What's your favorite role you've ever played? The most time I ever got on set was for Bosch. Yeah. <laughs> Which we can talk about. Jasmine, uh, right? Was her name? Was yes. that the name? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was her name. Uh, so that was the most time I've ever spent on a big set. Uh, mm. And so that was really fun. Everyone mm. was awesome, which you know this. Incredible, incredible time. And also to get to play, I'm a, I'm a sweatpants gal. And I know like today I have lipstick and stuff, but I was going to say, I don't, that doesn't track. That doesn't, uh, there there's ripped jeans on under this, but also I had a very important audition this morning. You can tell from my look, obviously it was for Postmates. Um, (laughs) check this out on you, check this out on YouTube. (laughs) You never know. It's so silly. It's so dressed up for something. Uh, but I'm like a really cozy person. And so to get in, to go play someone who's like, she's high end, she's in like big shoes and bandage dresses and like lots of jewelry and to like get that. But also because they wrote a scene that also I got like to be, have like a nice vulnerable moment. Like there's a scene where I get threatened and it's very scary. And I have not had that juxtaposition because so far in my career, other than some movies that I've done, I've played like small characters and we don't really get a lot of onioning. We don't really get a lot of layering, right? Because we're a few steps up from being background. You know, we supply the story and do mm-hmm. what we do best, but to get fed actual scenes that were were worthy of, you know, I'm very proud of that work and putting it on my reel and stuff. I'm super thrilled about it. So that's been, I think my favorite experience. Uh, yeah. I got to do... I've done some super weird stuff that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's like no Postmates way. auditions, like like, like, Postmates like auditions. Knocking. Yeah, <laughs> so silly. Uh, I there's a there's pilots. For example, I did the the Cruel Intentions pilot, 
mm-hmm. uh, that never ended up becoming a show. And I'm I'm good friends with the director and writer Roger Cumble, and he was like, "Hey, so this is this is one of those like side stories where he was like, hey, can you show up on set as an extra, and I'll give you a line.' And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm already packed. <laughs> I, I was like, what time do you need a ride? Like, what do you, he's like, just, he's like, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And then closer to, he was like, Hey, so I was, I was a family's nanny. I was also like, yeah. I was training with the, with the mom. I was like, like that, that's like, they're my LA family, that family. i love the, every member of their family. And he was just doing me a solid. Mm-hmm. He was like, we have a role, but it's kind of weird. It's like, okay, whatever. I'll do whatever. He's like, can you dress head to toe in silver body paint and be a raver? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you're like, you're like, can you tell me the weird part? Where, where? I was like, and <laughs> do I have to choreograph? Do you have to give me choreography? Like I'll pay someone. I don't care. So I ended up on the, on this yacht at two o'clock in the morning filming the scene that's never going to get seen by anyone where I'm in head to toe. There's a silver, it was originally body paint and like a silver bikini. And then they realized that it was actually like 50 degrees, 40 degrees, very, very cold, you know, on the water in the marina at two o'clock in the morning. So they gave me like a silver body suit. Mm. It was really interesting, but then head to toe silver, uh, like eyebrows, hair, everything is like spray painted. And I'm just like doing this weird shit all around the leads of the scene and like bothering them and stuff, which is, but no one's ever going to see it. That bums me out so hard. But that's some of the fun stuff that like no one gets to see, but you, I was very present when I did that. I was having such a good time. Yeah. And you know, and again, um, you know, I'm not going to, you're on my podcast, so I'm not going to like say bad stuff about you, but you're, you're, you're not doing great with the lightning round. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh shit. Shit, I forgot this lightning round. <laughs> because now I want to like go into that too, because I think what... <laughs> I think what's really great about that is you say that no one is going to see that, right? And that does not make us less of an actor because no one will see that. But what also comes from that is you did that person a solid, right? They're going to remember that. And this isn't the only thing they're going to ever do. There's other people on that boat that you're, you've interacted with that are going to also, you know, uh, come down there. So the big thing that comes in my mind is that was an amazing network solid, right? And what we think in this industry is the bigger things we do, the more we get out there, you know, the bigger pro- projects, that's going to be the thing that moves us, moves the needle. That doesn't always work that way. And so you, I think when you, what, what kept blaring my mind was network wow what a great solid you did for this person that Mm. will continue on so i think people will see it but not in the way you think Mm. it's so funny you say that because in my mind everyone else was doing me a favor Uh, by allowing me to be there by giving me a name on a call sheet by you know doing giving me the line which my managers at the time were like don't go do that yeah like yeah you know i think i think it's gonna work i think it's gonna work and it Mm -hmm. did and it was, it was a lovely experience. And just having just it, I don't think that credit did anything for me, technically speaking, but I think the gravitas that I took from it being like, I showed up on a big set. I think mm-hmm. that did wonders for my confidence at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you are not alone. I hear it. I've been there with other actors where we just like, I'm just, just thank you. Oh, please. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, all that stuff. And I think that is the part that you, I, other coaches out there are screaming from the rooftops of we're not doing, nobody's doing us a favor. They're getting something too. Right we are also elevating their show. And that's a really big thing. And so when people are like, you just need to be excited about an audition. I'm like, no, 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 no. Be thankful. But we also get to want more and desire more for that. So I... I... (laughs) Horrible lightning round. But I do want to say, you did a podcast with an actor who was on That Girl Lele. Uh 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 Uh-huh. Yes. And he mentioned something about... There was a story that you said somewhere about like, taking up space and having like been mm-hmm. seen of being small. And then the same person saw you years later and we're like, Oh, I understand why, how you take up space now. And that story really stuck with me. Obviously not the details because I can't remember anybody's name, but I really, I was like, Oh, I get it. I get taking up space now more. I yeah. couldn't have, I don't know if I could have done it before yeah. I learned the lesson by living it, but I yeah. really get it. We're getting it now. And there's a lot of things that I have to see. I had to be in mm-hmm. right. Being on, on set. And, and we'll talk about that in a second. Cause I like, well, let's talk about it now. You know, I was just, I was just talking about voiceover. Why I 
quit voiceover for a very long time doing voiceovers because I got a lot of notes when I did it for Wells Fargo. Not I would they would say it's Fargo and not Fargo. I know it sounds really weird, right? Like oh, to, I had no idea. Yeah, really? and it's Wells Fargo, not Fargo. Do you, do you hear like it's just a yes, little? I do. I didn't, and for me, I got in my head and I was like, well, I don't know, my diction's off. I can't like these people hate me, and I went down the path, and I even like left my voiceover agent and all of that stuff. Cut to, I would say almost 10 years later, I, you know, I've been podcasting. I was in a, the Burbank studios doing a serial podcast where acting and doing and stuff like that and getting notes and taking the notes and just being like, great, thanks. Let's just try it this way. How it went through my body. I just Mm -hmm. gave it. They're like, awesome. How did I get that from being on set for seven seasons of a show? Right. And so I hear you when you say, like, I needed to go through that. I had to go through that and understand that one, my addiction to notes had to stop. Mm. We all need to stop being so addicted to somebody else telling us we're great. Yeah. Right. I mean, the val- <laughs> validation station is where a lot of us like to live, isn't it? <laughs> well, we don't. Right. And so you, when you think about it, like if, it's not about being, it's not about being, I don't know, like conceited or being like, you know, I don't know. It's not about any of that. It's about you showing up in silver, right. And just taking up space and saying, yes, two o'clock in the morning. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm going to do my job, do it well. And I'm going to leave. That's it. It's not like, I don't know. I just want to change that reframe for all of the our, our actor community that we're out there for. Okay. We are, I'm sorry. I were, I suck at the, the freaking lightning round too. You're just <laughs> great. I just want to know more about you. Okay. So we this talked is, about- By the way, I have a ton of zoom calls that go way too long. And I'm always like, I might get, my people talk a lot. Like, whoever I take games with. And like, I'm realizing that like, if there's smoke, I might be the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's that meme? Am I the drama? Oh, Oh, man. Uh, Okay, so two more lightning questions. We're going to do this. What's your dream role? Or what are you dying to play? I am dying to play something in a different period or someone who actually existed. Great. I love the idea of homework. I'm going to do it. Okay, great. Killing it. Killing it this lightning round. Why did you become an actor? I became an actor because stories are everything and it seemed really fun. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do to take care of yourself mentally? I don't know if I can answer this in a lightning capacity, um, but I, uh, I do less. Mm. Yeah. I had to start doing a lot less this year. Uh, yeah. I used to try and do a little bit of everything, which technically I still do a lot. Like, in terms of content creation and helping people and answering emails and being an actor and running a business and all these things. But I, I, the more I have on my schedule, the less I show up for people. Mm. So mm. on a day like today, for example, I had a podcast for my podcast earlier. I have you, I have a movie premiere I'm supposed to go to tonight for a friend. And I took a work meeting that to me, that's technically four meetings in my head. And this is almost too many. It was because of myself that I allowed, like I, my scheduler technically allows me to take two meetings a day Good. because I need space. And I also have to take space in between them because when I have back-to-back Zooms, I start to mentally check out. I know you understand this. <laughs> yeah. And and then people, for example, would pay for my time and my head would be going 17 ways to Sunday. And I was like, well, am I even doing good work for the work I'm signing myself up for? What's the point of making an extra hundred dollars today? if I think the work I'm doing is worth five. And so I had to get really serious with myself about what my time is worth and where I can recoup it and get myself mental energy. Because also then at the end of the day, if I have filled my day to the max and that I am a big fan of time blocking and fitting Mm -hmm. things in the schedule, I also don't have kids. So I am very much in control of my own schedule. Uh, in terms of that, I like to know exactly roughly what I would be doing at that time. But if I put in my schedule, et cetera, time, I can play on Instagram. I can flip through TikTok. I can watch YouTubes. I can mess around as much as I want because that's what I can do during that time. And I have to have 
pockets of time where I do that. And I have to take time to go lay on the couch and read. And I have to go for, before we did this podcast, I took two walks around my block because I was like, I haven't been outside very much today. Ooh, yes. Yeah. And just mm-hmm. to get myself back down to zero, because this job of acting asks so much of us and the other businesses I work on ask so much of me. And so if I try to do them all at once, I will do none of them. Yeah. That's yeah. I take care of myself. I do less. Yeah. You know, there's this great book, Essentialism, that talks about. Greg what? McEwen. <laughs> Greg McEwen. That's my buddy. Yep. I the act talks. like I like him. Like, no, I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, you guys are like, you're like, it's like that. Like, Best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we read that in, you know, I think a collective friend of ours, we read that in um, Miata's course. I took mm, Miata's course mm-hmm. back in the way before times, um, you mm. know, and she offered that book. I, I should go back and read it, you know, and just like, you know, paring down. I think one of the things that I try to always say to everybody out there, from my perspective, is I'm a dad of two. And, you know, your relationship and stuff like that. And so I think some of the messaging out there is that uh, you you got time, you got Beyonce, she got, you got the same hours that she got and all this stuff. And, you know, that's the messaging, you know, get off your, oh, you are you on your IG or whatever? And I, I love how you just said, it's my et cetera time. And what happens in that time is I get to like decompress here and just zone for a second and not be on fire. And that's okay. I want to just say that. I love that you said et cetera time. And I saw it. I, yeah. saw how you it. I, I block it in and I'll mm-hmm. look at how many meetings I have and I will move them. Canceling things mm-hmm. is a big thing I'm a fan of, especially yep. everyone in my Patreon, everyone in my community, they know I'm an actor first and I'm everything mm-hmm. else second, including when I, I, I work on podcasts and in my podcasting company, when I meet new clients, I say, just so you guys know, I am an actor. And so often that that will always come first. I'll always get your work done, but I need you to know that because I've also been in so many situations in my life where I put everyone else first Mm -hmm. and then I sat at the bottom. And then when actor stuff did come up, I'd get a whole wave of like, oh my God, I'm going to disappoint everyone. When the thing I finally wanted showed up, it caused con- conflict. And I was like, I'm not, I can't have that anymore. And if I want to do this, big conflict with the universe. 100. Yes. The universe. Yes. And then I'm asking for it to not come essentially. Mm. So if I want to do this until I'm 100, I can't pack my day to the brim anymore. And if that means I make a little less money or if I'm not hustling as hard as someone thinks I should, like, I'm not going to do a self tape every day. I'm just not. I can't do it. Yeah. I won't do quality work. I'll spread it out but I would rather do quality work over a long period of time than check a bunch of boxes every single day. Okay, everybody. If you're watching this on YouTube, you just saw Sam do bunny ears hustling. <laughs> so we are out of the lightning round and I want to know what's your, cause I have a strong, you know, problem with that word, but I want to know what's your like wide bunny ears for you. Yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you fine. And then I want to <laughs> hear yours <laughs> Okay, um, because uh, because I am a I am a child of the content creation community. I am I grew up, you know, we didn't have we got like computer games when I was a kid, I guess, ish, right? But computers were new when I was a kid. And the I the the amount of content available to me as I have started to come up in acting is massive. Yeah. And it, you know, even especially in 2020 and beyond, the clubhouses, the podcasts, the the Instagram lives, the availability of information to learn more, to do more, to be more with your career. And the idea that you have to be constantly pushing, pushing, pushing for the next thing, for the next thing. And we are told these stories of, you know, like she's just a hustler. Like, I don't even know when she sleeps. I don't like that. (laughs) That to me sounds like someone on the road to burnout. And we see it all the time. This is why celebs you know, check into rehab and, and get addictions and have issues and don't have compatible relationships because they don't have any time for anything else. And I don't want to do that. I Mm -hmm. refuse. So I'll accomplish more things, but like the idea of hustling in order to get somewhere, it just feels like a rat race. It feels Mm -hmm. to me like there's this push to be doing that, that feeling that actors have that other people have too, but especially actors that the second our like head hits the pillow, we think I should be doing something I yeah. should be doing I should be writing this show I should be producing my own content I should be coaching every single day I should be self-taping all the time I should and it's like great but like what of those could you actually do instead and if you did one of those really well over a long period of time 
would that feel as good as doing all of those things mediocrely just to get them done? And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm over the hustle thing. I want to like see my family. I want to sleep. I want to take showers. I want to like cook in my kitchen. Not showers, Sam. I'm not showers. <laughs> I know. Well, listen, when Postmates calls, you got to be ready. Okay. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. <laughs> so I want to, I want to be able to do this and I want to maintain it. Right. Because I had a vision for this career that, when I, I thought that my success, the only way I ever pictured success was when I was like, I like it capped out the dream capped out around age 25, 26. That's the, as far, as far as my brain could get when I was starting in this career, I was like, well, that's what I pictured was this young, like cover of magazine, like this Sam Valentine. Da, da, da. And when that didn't happen, I was like, oh, so what is this going to look like? how do I accept this looking not like I wanted it to look like? And the answer was not to do more and push up harder, but to accept. And it seems as though the answer is doing better quality work over a long period of time. So if you want to sustain right. it, no, I think it's yeah. beautiful. If you want to sustain it, you know, listen, I have been really talking about vision. And I think a lot of us, you said this piece beautifully that I didn't think about. And that is, we do have a vision for or a dream or a goal, whatever you want to call it. I'm using that synonymously. I do not think they're synonymous. But I think a lot of people are synonyms. I'm sorry. I think a lot of people don't use it. I think a lot of people use it that way. But the way you said it is our, our vision for our career does cap out at a certain age. It does. But what we don't do is continue to make a new vision. Right. And so we aren't pulled by anything. We are literally what we do. If you are not pulled by something, you will jump into the river of like the cult of average. And you'll be like, okay, everybody's worried about like, how do I audition? How do I do this thing? How do I impress this person? Instead of I'm going to get up and I'm going to do this life or this career my way. That is really beautiful and commendable that way. I like to say people need to linger in their vision a lot longer like we don't sit, get up in the morning and 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 we you know sit there and we're like oh gosh remember that 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 trailer i'm just gonna be in that trailer it's gonna be so great i'm gonna walk on set they're like dewan i'm ready for you and then we're gonna like go on set and you're gonna be with a crew and a cast that you love that you respect like just linger in all of that so we are pulled we are literally walking into that space but what we do is we jump into everybody else's like anxiety about oh, this industry, yeah. you know? And so when I think of hustle, I got really angry first about it. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I, I got angry because I didn't, I never, it never sat well with me, the whole 10,000 hours thing. Mm. I always would say to people, show me your card. Show me the time card. Where do like, this is something that's used like mentally to beat people up and say, you got to put in 10,000 hours for, okay, uh, well, but what are you at? Sam, what are you, how many hours are you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, well, right. we don't know, but we let that beat us up. Or you got to do something every day towards your, those things, those adages, they work against us. Because what if I did two things today? Can I just take tomorrow off? Like, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Can I double up and like, you know, and so that hustle part of it. And I, and I think the last big thing that made me angry was I wish there was nobody out there saying to actors, and I'm trying to break this. If you can think of doing anything else, then go do that because you don't want to be fully an actor. Right. And if we just allowed ourselves to be the hyphen, the mogul that I see in front of me, that you are right. All the stuff that you just listed. Hi, patron. What's up? <laughs> you know, hi, you know, business and hi, all that stuff that you just said working with. If we just allowed ourselves to be those hyphens, we might have people that are artists and running big granola com companies or artists and like fortune 500s or artists. And like, but no, we said you can only be this. And so we have a lot of people that are jaded that are angry, that are unfulfilled, that are walking around and they're not able to give their best self to these characters because they are not fulfilled in other places. So my version of hustle, I'm saying, do you. That was a long answer, I know, but. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, if anybody's just listening, I'm just vigorously shaking my head because what you just said too releases so much of that timeline. And listen, I'm only 34. I got a lot of, like, there's a lot of miles left on these tires. You know what I'm saying? So like there's time and there's space and there's energy to do it. 
And I'm with a group of people who are coming up who are writing more and better stories for different people. So it's mm-hmm. not going to be the stories that I thought it was going to be 20 years ago when I had the vision of me being successful at 25 also. But what you said about like releasing that and just doing you too, there is a there is an intrinsic timeline on this career that we put on it that makes me furious that mm-hmm. like we have to get somewhere by this amount of time. And if I don't, if I'm not making that money, then I can't do this. And when you open up the idea that you can do this and this, Mm -hmm. it just blasts that timeline to pieces, which is why I tell people like, yeah, I have, I, I have another company that I do podcast production. Do you know what that does? It gives me financial stability. I like one broke actress is a full business. Now this gives me financial stability. So when acting comes along, I just signed with new managers. They're like, Hey, could you get new headshots? I was like, sure. When would you like them by? It's not a stress to like go spend money on my career and things like that and roll with whatever needs to come because I'm not at every audition that comes. I'm not like, Oh, this is going to be the one that can pay for my next headshots. Thank God I must book this immediately. It just releases all of that. And the, do I have data that backs up that I book more when that once this has been released? No, because there's so many other factors that go in line with that, right? But yeah. that and that hyphen it is so important because I'm yeah. so act this this so, something I would like to blow up is the starving artist. Oof. Bye. <laughs> Please get out of here. Why do we have to have so much shame around wanting to have money? Or wanting to have food. Yes. <laughs> like, because yes. starving, like. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's like, well, unless you're like, also there's like a weird, especially for women, I feel like there's like this like thin wafy thing that goes along with body image that is just like a whole nother topic of being like a little tiny, like very starving artist girl. Like, yeah. no, thank you. I will take up space. But that mentality of like, well, if I, when I moved here, the thing was, if it will, what's when I only make my money from acting, that's when I will know I am a working actor. I was like, oh yes, that's what I'll do. I'll only make my money from acting. And I got out here and I started living in Los Angeles and I was like, so expensive. How am I going to make this type of money from acting? So I haven't, and I don't. And yet I've been, you know, getting along great for 11 years now. So fuck that <laughs> well also what i think i think for me that is a and I, anybody out there i mean this with so much respect but it is a base level uh dream right mm-hmm. there to make your money just off acting and why did why do i say that why does duan say that because if you have watched what other actors who are successful are doing they are diversifying their portfolio yeah. they have restaurants they have vodka companies they do in brand deals they're doing stuff outside they have you know the industry and then it's not just from acting acting might have been that catalyst but they're understanding that this is not it's a volatile you know business at its best and we know that it's 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 based off that so when you say that you aren't really thinking of great i can have a lipstick company great i can have t-shirts and all that stuff hi there see you on set we're just gonna plug our stuff patron and one broke actress <laughs> but you feel me like it's not yes. it's just it's something you're like i just want to make and yeah sure you know what i do a lot of money off of my acting industry but like i i'm never really stressed about money anymore because how i show up in my coaching business or how i show up in my other endeavors as well and if acting can feed those things why can't those things feed acting yes well, when I, I, like, I bow down, I think it's a thousand. We're vibing. Ago. We're vibing. It's, just, it's such the thing. It's such a thing. Also, if act, if you see an actor who's like, that you are sure that they are only acting, bet you anything, that person owns real estate. Yes. Thank you, which is another form of income that no one talks about. So. Boom. Yes. And it's, oh, and it's, and it's all okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, you oh, know, yeah. I just. I can't wait till I own real estate. Let's go. I'm ready. It's fun. It's fun. Like, I gotta... <laughs> it's fine. <huh? laughs> I got to say that, you know, I, I know you've been at this and I, I, you know, for a bit in the acting, you know, world, I think you said you've been out here for 11 years, right? Mm-hmm. You've been yeah. out here for 11 years. And one of the big things that I I've seen you give so many awesome business tips and all those things. Things. Uh, thank you for that from on behalf of all of the acting community, oh, you know, for thank that. You. Uh, oh, it's so funny. I like to comment s- that because I think you do the same. I, I, I think I, it's the reason I do that is because I want to make sure because I think sometimes 
people think we're, is it invaluable the word I want to use? Or we don't have, like we're out here leading this charge, but every once in a while, it's nice to hear a, hey, great job, you know, because we're putting it out there. And sometimes we don't get that back all the time. And so I want to make sure I say it clearly to you like that. Thank you for being one of those beacons in our in, in our in our industry, in our community. So, you know, you it, it's been out there. We should say that more to each other. But you're talking about representation and, you know, your plight to getting awesome representation. And I know that, which I do not believe, I'm going to go on record and say, I do not believe that's actor's first move, but I know that has been something of getting, right? I say that like actors, like, I just got to get an agent person, then I'm going to like, but you know, but like, what's been your road to great representation? You have like this, you know, like, did you just wake up like this? You know. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, we we're so on the same page. When you said like it should be their first move to get an agent, I'm like, please <laughs> talk more about this because I te- so I have a working actor workshop where I talk yeah. about like getting started in this business in a major market, mm-hmm. and it's like it's not about. I don't teach acting. I am I bow down to coaches. It is not something I know how to do very well. But that adage that like you should okay, so you get out to your place and then you get an agent is like cool maybe in like 1980 but like I don't know anyone who's gotten a great agent the second they landed unless they were like 15 and like really coming off something hot like it's very getting a theatrical agent is one of the hardest things you will do in this business getting a good theatrical agent is one of the absolute hardest things you will ever do my road to having representation that I actually vibe with has been an 11 year journey. This has mm-hmm. been constant and it will flow. It's going to change again as my career changes. And I'm okay with that. I, uh, I had the vision that I think a lot of people do that they'll sign with their first manager and they'll also include them in their Oscar speech, that it was going to be that type of thing, which is lovely. But a lot of the people I know didn't marry their high school sweetheart. So Mm -hmm. we grow and we change and we realize and learn things. And my, oh my God, I I came, I had a senior showcase in Los Angeles uh, before I graduated from college. So I came, it was the first time I came out here, but I already knew, I was like, I'm moving to LA. This is like my first time getting (laughs) out. LA's waiting for me. (laughs) I was like, this is just wait, just wait till they see me. (laughs) So I sent out my headshots in like a packet, obviously, as the big fat mailers that we used to send. And the agent, an agent saw it, a commercial agent was like, great, can you come audition at the office? And I was like, actually, I will be in town on this weekend in March. And they were like, yes, come by. So I got off the plane at LAX, just like Miley Cyrus said, and I went straight to an agent meeting. I was like, this is it. This is solidifying all of the things I thought were going to happen. So easy. Check. This is, yeah. I was like, I was like, that's so cute that everyone else is performing in this showcase. I'm like, I already have an agent. Like, oh, it's so cute for you guys. I'll, I'll do it with you to make it look like so, so mentally checked out for what I was doing because I thought I was already past it. Mm-hmm. This agent turned out to be a absolute nightmare. Wow. They I did not see that coming. Like trash. And I stayed with them for years. Because I thought that that was what a relationship was. I thought your agent three-way called you and signed you up for acting class without asking you. I thought your agent put you on the, you know, I thought an agent three-way calling you and putting you up to get your eyebrows waxed because they needed to quote unquote be fixed um, was normal. I thought that them, the horrific things that this person did to myself and my mentality, I was with for years because I got a ton of auditions and I Mm. thought that that meant that it was all worth it. And I thought that was how it went. Uh, So when I say, what do you do for yourself mentally? You should have said, don't get with shitty agents. (laughs) (laughs) Message me as I hit it. Um, (laughs) But this person still works and they have a ton of people on their roster Mm. and that's fine. I like to think that people change. I like to think that the person that I was with, I guess like five, six, six years, seven, six or seven oh my God, eight years ago now when I left them, that uh, they're a different person now. I would like to think I'm going to send out good vibes that they're better than they were now then. But that was tumultuous. And that set me up for a series of, I didn't understand how I should be treated. Mm -hmm. And I signed with a lot of people just because they wanted me, not because I wanted them. I thought the second I had a meeting, I was like, this is it. I didn't realize meetings were vibe checks and making sure that we were a good fit. And I assumed a meeting was, I have to have to impress them. I have to make them like me because they're my only option. And 
they might have been, but also they definitely were if that was my mentality. So it's it was rough. It was really rough. And then in the pandemic, when everyone was on equal playing field for my first time ever since I moved to this city, uh, and I started to throw all my weight behind One Broke Actress because I didn't have anything else to really work on, it ended up growing One Broke Actress. And now almost all of my reps heard from me first from One Broke Actress. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Which is just, it's just cool. Cause I, I made it, you know, like, it's mm-hmm. like my, it's not someone else's project. Like it was my thing, which was, I didn't ever think that that would do anything. Um, I'll say like my voiceover agent, I had been, I've been with for 10 years, my print agent I've been with for 10 years, but my, my theatrical and my commercial both came out of one broke actress's existence and my mm-hmm. new managers were thrilled about it. And they also were connected because they had seen my work on Bosch Mm -hmm. so I have people who have seen like my projects and the projects I've been in and appreciated them enough to reach out to me and that is a whole different vibe than someone who I thought you know blessed me with a meeting it's a, it's a total it's a total shift right energetic shift of how we show up and you know the i guess what i would just add to that for everybody listening really go back and listen to that story about how agents you know treat you and how you show up and how this is not it's a vibe check i want to just repeat that it's a vibe check it is not a oh please you know please 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 hire me um i would just say the same thing in my world it happened to me with the teacher like a, an, an acting teacher out here, very popular acting, acting teacher who has not changed, you know, but, you know, but I have. And I think what we do to these people is we idolize them. We think that they are the keys to our success. And when we get that power back and we understand that we, one broke actress, you know, you, I created that. Well, I should have created this a long time ago. I should have bet on myself a long time ago. But <laughs> I know, I know. You know? And so I don't give it away to an agent. Don't give it away to a casting director or a director or a teacher or any of those people as well there. But well, and I would also add to that too, that that gets easier as you get older. Yeah, yeah. This business yeah. is sold on this lie that like when you're young is when you're prime time. Mm-hmm. But the older I get, my reps are about my same age now, mm-hmm. which yeah. before the the age difference was like 20 plus years. And so that power dynamic is very real. And as that power dynamic shifts, as I get older and I'm able to stand at my power more, the gift of staying in this business longer is not just knowing more people and having more experience. It's being the same age as the people who are making the decisions yeah, and you just stand in your power a lot more. So if you're listening to this and you're 18 or 20 years old, please stay here, mm-hmm. listen to this now. And you're, it's going to feel weird when you're trying to put this into play when you're 20 years old, because you're like, what do I know? You know, when someone's not a fit, you know, when someone's treating you poorly, I do think you do know that deep down. Yeah. Yeah. You've talked a lot about Bosch and mm-hmm. I would love to hear it's, you know, that Bosch legacy was born inside of the pandemic. Mm. So, which means you had to have self taped for it, Indeed. which means you, <laughs> would you take us through that process? I want to hear a little bit yeah. about, you know, from self tape to booking, you know, and all the people that I know and love are on that show as well. Yeah. I, I mean, it was when that audition came through, it was July of 2021. Uh, when that audition came through, it was like the the beginning of a weekend and like, it was 4th of July weekend and we were having friends at our, our apartment pool and like going to have a grill and all this stuff. And it came through on like the, like right before the break at like four or five o'clock. And I was like, oh, you know, (laughs) yes, yes, I do know. (laughs) Like, I like to have a margarita and I wanted to just chill. I'm like, what if I get sunburned and like all this stupid shit that comes into your head? And I was like, Oh, I have work to do. And I looked at it and it said Bosch. And I was like, oh, wait, this is exciting because I was familiar with the show, but also it's my husband's favorite show. It's, yes, he's a, such a big fan. And it's, he's read him. It's his dad's favorite show. It's my dad's favorite show. I often call Bosch everyone's dad's favorite show because like, I think it that's our, that's our demo. <laughs> I, I, I'm really good with that demo. When I go to like yeah. old, places there, like, it's usually, I'm like, ah, that person's like 30 and they watch it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's so funny. It's awesome. It's, but they know they know their audience, right? Yes, they do. So it was exciting to get just something for also that casting office. I hadn't been in before for Vicky Thomas. So I was like, oh, gosh, should I just like slam this now and get it done? I'm like, you know what? Eh. Like I went out, I was going out quite a bit in 2021. You know, mm-hmm. the years are ups and downs. And 2021 was pretty busy. And so I had the gift of being like, eh, I'll get it done. It wasn't like, I must, I must film this immediately. Uh, and so another thing I, that comes with age, another yes, thing, that comes- <laughs> patience and yes. not needing to like get it done instantly. Uh, so I was like, eh, I'll do it later. And so we had our party and then the next day I was like, all right, well, let's film this. Let's, let's, let's hang this out. And because my husband was so familiar with the show, I did, I think two takes and he was like, okay, we're good. I was like, wait, I didn't really, I didn't really do much. And he's like, no, 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 that's the tone. You're good. He's, <laughs> he's like, you nailed it. It's, it's simple. I was like, all right. And turned it in. And then I got the, the no callback, just like pinned and then mm-hmm. booked. Uh, and it happened is very, very quickly from there. A couple of things I want to point out about this is one, my self tape setup was not very good when I booked mm-hmm. this role. Mm-hmm. So stop lying to yourself. You need a perfect self tape setup. Um, it's, the, it's like the foundation <laughs> of what I'm teaching, what I try to tell people. It's literally that foundation. Yeah. Because like right now, now I have this beautiful self tape wall and I have like my, I know my lighting to a T. I know like I have a stool that my husband sits in and we lower it all the way to the ground because he's very tall or else I have weird eye lines. Like we know exactly what we're doing now. At the time, I think I had a curtain. I think I had like one light and like my window light was to the side. It was not what it is now. It doesn't, it didn't matter. It had nothing to do with it. I, you could see me, you could hear me. It was in focus and it was a good tape and it fit the tone of the show. So it yeah. worked. And I used a prop because I love a prop. And everyone tells me not to use props. It's so I don't. It. And I didn't use the stage directions because they were like, she gets up at the end. And I was like, nah, she's fancy. She's not getting up. The other person can get up and she can watch them walk out because that's more interesting. Like just simple little things that I, I wouldn't have done five years ago. I wouldn't have, I would have followed the stage directions. Well, I have to stand up and leave because she stands up and leaves in the thing. Who gives a shit? Yes. <laughs> Let's just yeah. like do the thing. So it was really lovely. And I'll tell you what, some, another, fun thing that came with this booking is uh it's my first recurring so Mm -hmm. I had the day and they're like it's one episode guaranteed potentially two and when I got the second one I was like yes like this is great and then I left to go get married I left town in September to go wait you left during while you were booking you went out of town that's not you're not supposed to do that I'm breaking all the rules oh my gosh we're never supposed to leave town Sam (laughs) and get this shit so, and to get married, what a plebeian <laughs> move. It was only my third wedding date at that point. So we leave town to go to a wedding. So I like wrap my second day and I said goodbye to everyone because you just, it's, you just don't roles know. are weird. Cause you just, it, even a, any role, to be honest, you're like, thank you guys so much. Every time I left, they did the, you know, the, cl- oh, that's a wrap on Sam. That's right. And I was like, how many times are we going to do this? <laughs> I yeah. shot my second day, like yeah. there was my second episode. And then when we, we were in Colorado and I got a call and they were like, hey, they'd like to shoot with you. And I was like, wow, cool. So I'll be back after my wedding. And this is the days that I'm home. And my agent was like, great. If they can make work, great. If not, let's not worry about it. She was like, so understanding, so lovely. And not only did they make it work, they had me COVID test after my wedding in the tiny mountain town that I was in. They coordinated with like the local pharmacy, which is also a soda fountain shop. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's how small of a town it was. They got me COVID tested there. And then when I got, and then we drove home, it's like 16 hour drive. We drove home and then they sent a COVID concierge to my house to COVID test me. So that way I could then, so I drove home for my wedding, got COVID concierge tested at my home. The next day I was in wardrobe and the next day I was shooting. So they made it fit for me. I didn't change anything about my schedule. And to have a co-star contract and have it fitted for you and ha- make it fit and not move your life around, especially an important event like that, that I will never forget. Talk yeah. about learning to take up space. That was well see that's a look at look at look at where we started this podcast right what yeah. we're talking about and where you are so I it sounds like you do know that about it I think the big lesson I'm hearing also is what I think we forget and again this comes from experience with me is so if anybody can take anything from this is we forget to ask for what we need mm-hmm. right 
all you can do is ask. And if they came back and said they couldn't, then we would have to make a new decision at that point. But we do this with money. We're scared to ask, like, can I just ask for the guest star billing? They're like, well, well, they'll say no, and they'll X me out, and I'll never work again in this town, and now I'm dead. I'm like, wow, just let's, let's just take it to dead. Instead of just asking, you know, for what you want, and you just told, this is what I'm getting married. I'm not going to move this. If they can use me, great. If not. And so it's not even like everybody's like, oh, I got to be in a power play. Or I got to show them or anything like that. It's literally just standing in your own presence and power and just saying, hey, this is what's going on for me right now. Um, I would love to work with them if they can hold. If not, then you know what? We'll catch them on episode, blah, 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 blah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And so that's what yeah. I've heard. And I wanted to wrap that up in a pretty bow because it's so. <laughs> yeah. It's and it, so you know, it's a gift too of having been on set with those folks already is yeah. that when I thought about telling them that I was going out of a town for my wedding, it wasn't me like sticking it to the man, like, yeah, well, I'm an actor and I'm also a person. So fuck you guys. I got this. No, I knew exactly who I was talking about. And I was like, oh, well, I'm, they're super kind. I'm sure if I just tell them the truth that they'll, they'll figure out whatever they need to figure out. And so humanizing the yes. people who make choices. On the other side. Yes. On the other side. And, yeah. You know, and just knowing that we're all just, everyone's just you know, doing their best. Doing Everyone's their best. just doing their best. And they have someone behind them who's like, can you do it faster and cheaper? And if you can keep that in mind of everyone being like that, then it just humanizes the whole thing. It changes everything when I shadow directed on Bosch because mm. I got to see how much of this really comes down to money. Who did right? you shadow direct with? I got to shadow direct a guy named Adam. I can't remember. It was like Adam Singer. Adam. I can't remember Adam, but I did also with Ernest and oh, oh gosh, night. I can't remember her name right now, but Ernest. Oh, okay, um, I want to know. Uh, but I did because I wanted to. Like, so that was my big deal. I was like, you know, in, in season four, I was like, I also want to do X. And they were like, yeah. I was the first person from the crew and the cast that had asked the shadow. And from that point on, they had a line of people. And I was just like, and I just came in there and I was like, I sat with my eight, my manager during our, our yearly manager thing. And she was like, mm -hmm. we, we, we meet every time in December at Jar. If anybody knows that restaurant. Oh, oh my God. Wait, that's so funny. That's where I filmed Bosch at. Oh, did you? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. I love yeah. that space. I'm definitely, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we just talked, what do you want to do next year? What are you looking forward to? And I was like, I really want to direct. And, you know, I've, I've decided I want to do episodic directing. And he's like, this is what we have to do. Here's some steps. And that's how I got to that space. But, you know, before we run out of time, I want to make sure that I talk to you really quickly about One Broke Actress in a little bit, because I think my goal was also so people can hear this other side of you in acting. And I really just wanted to bring that in and not just One broke actress that's such a great part of you and by the by not to tell you how to run your business at all um at all but i wish i had known more about your podcasting business i didn't know that that oh, was yeah. even a thing out there and i i had been looking for you know so yeah. but one of the things when i was doing my deep dive into sam valentine uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> what skeletons did we find? when i was doing it you and i this podcast mm -hmm. is seasonal too so I, and I believe that's the way you started it when I was, I, I read somewhere, I heard you say something somewhere and I just do it in 10 to 15 episodes, seasons, like, like I do like Bosch and I do it that way. I, I release every other week mm -hmm. because I want to give space for my acting career. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes we can get on a podcasting grind and everybody's like, no, Duan, you got to do it every week or it won't be successful. And I was like, well, what if I, it was still successful and I did it the way I wanted to do it. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Intent your entire career. Yes, do it. Yeah. I want to do it. So I guess I just want to ask, you know, mm -hmm. what, how did you get so excited to tell actors about the business, you know? Yeah. I mean, it started from a place of, I just don't know what to do with these thoughts and why is no one talking about this? Mm -hmm. And it was, I was really sad. I was in a place where I was like, it was 2016. I was on unemployment. I had just filmed some movies, but I didn't know if they were going to come out. And I was, I had just joined a SAG and it changed my audition ratio. Mm -hmm. And I thought that reflected on my abilities and not just about the business as a whole. And I wasn't taking SAG up on all of their free stuff that I should have taken them up on. But I, I was, I was also really angry because I was being told that I couldn't tell the world that I was struggling, that I didn't know what to do between projects that, you know, I couldn't, my managers at the time said that I shouldn't uh, let the world know that I was looking for a side job because they were selling me as a leading lady. 
And that didn't sit well with me. It really upset me because I was like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do then? Just like put on this pretend hat and pretend like everything's fine and then go to an audition and act like I'm not desperate for work. Like, I don't, I don't understand. That doesn't work for me. So I started to just write it down and I put it in a blog. And then eventually at first it was just private. No one could see it. And then I shared it on Facebook, which tells you how old it is. Because no one shares anything else. Nobody. <laughs> um, what, what is, is Facebook? Facebook? <laughs> you meant TikTok. Never mind. You I meant TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> I meant TikTok. Uh, yeah. You know, when you share blogs on TikTok, they would hate that. So, <laughs> so I that was what I did. And it was just a place to put my thoughts. And I was, there was a double-edged sword where I was terrified that people in the business would read it and tell me that I was wrong or that the ideas I had were not good or were not quality and that no one agreed, or I just wasn't working hard enough. And that's why it wasn't working out for me. And then there was a side of me that was terrified because I was concerned that no one would ever read it. And so Mm -hmm. what was the point of doing it if no one saw it? Uh, For some reason, I never stopped doing it. And thank God, (laughs) because there are several times where I was like, I think I'm just going to shut this whole thing down. I think I'm just going to, because it was just the blog and then it became a podcast and then it kind of grew into the platform it is now. But in that sounds really nice when you say it on a podcast like this, like it was this and then it was this and now it's this. But the days in between that, I questioned if I was worthy of sharing anything. For a long time, I didn't share advice or facts because I thought that I might be wrong. And I was really concerned about saying things, quote unquote, factually. I was concerned that it wasn't enough data backed it up. I didn't have enough evidence. I didn't. But it was was your experience, Sam. But it was was my experience. But it was your experience, right? So who can say that's wrong? And not to, not to, you're valid. (laughs) You're valid for having it. But I was like, unless you're, I mean, you're, you're saying such beautiful stuff, right? And it's your experience. Why do we feel this way? (laughs) No, I can tell you why, because I didn't have a lot of credit. And so I thought that no one would want to hear from an actress who didn't have a really good resume. Uh, Mm -hmm. But then it has shifted over the years because now I'm so happy that I have this archive of myself from these different points in my career. It's scary because Mm -hmm. I know the internet is just a big envelope. We put shit in and just wait for someone to open. And I know in 10 or 15 years, I'm going to have a much bigger career than I have now. And what if I said something on an old blog that was stupid or uneducated or insulting to someone? And I've already dealt with it. There was already a previous podcast where a friend of mine and I were laughing in like 2016. I was very anxious about my career. And I said something about background actors. And I said something kind of derogatory and rude. Mm -hmm. And someone called me out on it. And they were like, hey, in this episode, you said something that hurt my feelings. And I was like, I am so sorry. That was absolutely where I was at at that time and Mm -hmm. had nothing to do with that piece. But that scares me sometimes now, knowing that like, there's a lot of me on the internet, <laughs> like a lot. And I get real. I'm like, listen, here's how uncomfortable I am in the XYZ. But also it's given me more freedom than anything else. Because if I run into someone at the grocery store, I don't have to pretend like I'm some highfalutin fancy actress. They know I was probably in my pajamas earlier, making Instagram stories with no makeup, talking about when the last time I had an audition was. Mm. So the freedom I've found in that is worth overcoming all of that fear that still pops up. But it's been, it's a ride and it's still, it's, it's going, you know, there's still people who tell me, you know, I had a big company tell me the other day I wasn't aspirational enough for them because the name is One Broke Actress. And I was like, that's pretty hurtful. But also that's unfortunate for you that you can't get in on the joke. I'm like, that's a bummer because it's fun and it's lighthearted and it's, it should be, we should, this should all, this should be lighter because we have to have that levity and that levity mixed with that honesty to me is kind of the sweet spot of it all. So would you ever change your name? And not, not that for that reason, but like where you were, where you were you know, 154 episodes, did my homework mm-hmm. oh my ago. God, <laughs> yes, honey, yes. yes. <laughs> well, 154 episode, episodes ago, you know, you, there's an evolution, I'm sure you're saying, yeah. is like with that, 
be ever like now I'm cha- one actress or one working actress or I don't know I don't I don't I don't this wasn't yeah. a prepared question I thought of you no know? it's true and I've thought about it right because mm-hmm. I when I started the podcast I was in a different position than I am now I think the bro has to do with not just financially but mentally physically or otherwise I think actors are often broken mm. or broken down mm. by someone or something in some way I think I love it so much. I think it, I don't foresee it changing anytime soon. I can see the platform morphing eventually to be about more other people Hmm. than just about me, especially when things take off as I am just knowing they're going to in the next five or 10 years. Mm. I have a, I'm giving it less. I'm giving it less. Yes. yes, yes. (laughs) I'll take all your vibes, sir. Uh, as things roll, I, I don't know if I'll be able to put all of the time in that I am now. Just like how you said podcasts are in seasons. That's why I pre-record mine. They're all, like the next season is basically recorded uh, because we have to give the space to other things. But I have like a dream of being on a set and, and you know, in my golf cart on the way to where I am. And I see a line of actors outside of some trailer off of you know the lot and they're auditioning and I can pull over and be like hey what's your name do you want to be on my Instagram and like sharing their stories and like blowing up their spot and doing what I can for other people so you know there's a I have a lot of ideas of what it could be one day like a fucking tv show for example but we'll see we'll see I can't wait to see and thank you so much for coming on to the Think Bigger Actors podcast because we have been so excited. I, I, I say we like it's so many people like we're all in here like <laughs> I, have I say that all the time. I'm like we were so happy to have you. I'm like it's just me. <laughs> all of us here at Think Bigger. <laughs> so I don't know where that came from. Thank yeah. you so much uh, Sam. <laughs> I felt like he was just doing me a solid. So honest, Sam. So freaking honest. And we've all thought it before. I've talked about this for uh, the first time in season two with Kirby, how Baptiste, how much I hate when people say, you know, actors should be grateful to be auditioning or booking. And we all feel that people are doing us a solid. No, we should be thankful just like we should be thankful for everything in our life because it breeds more of that. Say thank you more, please. But the former starts to create an unconscious hierarchy loop, a loop, a frequency that actors have been tapping into for generations. Oh, thank you. Thank you for booking me. You won't regret it. When are we actors going to stop feeling like someone is doing us a solid by hiring us? When are we going to really understand our worth, understand that we are giving something to, that there are billions of dollars being made with us on the team, not one part of the team with us on the team. We do this all over the place. When we get booked, when we get repped by an agent or a manager, when we get called in by a casting director, I don't even know where it all started from. You should be grateful just to be called in, to even be auditioning. Why? Because there are are thousands of actors not auditioning. How do I even know they're any good? Those actors that I keep getting lumped up in, that their hustle is anything like mine. Why do I continue to have to tap into the consciousness of actors from a generation ago? This is a borrowed belief that has expired like spoiled milk that someone dropped on aisle nine. Yes, I'm calling for a cleanup on aisle nine, y'all. Is that freaking serious? Somebody say clean up on aisle nine. How are we going to call in greatness? That series regular you want, that first network credit you want, that recurring guest star you want. How are we going to call in greatness when we are continue to call from a place of desperation, of lack, of please don't fire me, of please do me a salad? Where do we think we're going to end if, des- if desperation is, is the driver of our careers? This is the D12 shot, y'all. This is the D12 shot. The moment that I am continuing to take away from all of these wonderful speakers. Thank you, Sam, for bringing this up again. All of these wonderful speakers sharing their open, honest, and wonderful stories with us, with this virtual village. Tribe, come closer. It's time to start stepping into our destiny And it's time to step boldly. We belong here. We have something to share. 
something amazing, just like the wonderful director, the wonderful makeup artist on set, the script supervisor, the grip, everybody, the PAs, we all belong here. It's time to start claiming that and walking into spaces with this being our foundation. Thank you, Sam, for bringing this up again so we can talk about it again and again and again and again. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear what your number one takeaway is. Please hit me up on Insta at Think Bigger Coaching and share this podcast. Share it, share it, share it, share it, because we are getting out there. Downloads are happening. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. And I cannot wait to maybe see you at a retreat soon.